Welcome back developers. In this video, we want to talk about how do we make changes to an existing table. Now, we would like to think that, hey, once you create a table, it's set. We don't have to make changes. But in reality, that's rarely true. We often have to go and make changes, either to store new data that's going to be needed, to remove data that's no longer needed, etc. So let's take a look at how we're going to modify an existing database. And there's several things that we can do. So over here, I have my Heidi SQL open. And you'll notice that I have the customer SQL open with a variety of different fields being visible. We have that field view open up. And let's say we want to add a new field. Well, it's pretty easy, and I'm going to show you both how to do it in SQL, as well as going in and changing it using Heidi SQL. First, let's look at it from our query standpoint. So I can come over here, and I can specify alter table. Remember, I type it all lowercase. I'm letting Heidi SQL automatically convert that case for me. That and the color is letting me know that I'm typing this correctly. I have to specify what table. Now I can use the little back tick mark and specify customers. Then I'm going to choose add. I don't have to say column. This is inferred to be a column because I'm talking about tables. So I can just say add and then what's my column name and then my data type and anything else I might need. So I'm going to add in last purchase, as you can see there. And this is going to be a date time. You notice that date time is a different color. That's just because it's not a SQL keyword. It's a data type. Now you'll also notice that I did not put last purchase in sale quotes. You don't have to. Okay. The keyword is have. It's good to make sure that we're going to protect ourselves, especially because MySQL will kind of ironically let you use built-in keywords as field names and table names. I never recommend that because it opens you up for problems. So this will make sure that you're not doing something like that. I'm going to come over here and run. Notice I did not get an error. Go to my table, refresh that, and then select over here. You can see last purchase. Now I also have it here at clout score and maybe this clout score is something that has changed. We don't need this anymore. Okay, so let's look at how we're going to change that and come back over here to my query tab, alter table customers. I'm going to keep that, but now I'm going to say drop clout score, run that. Once again, no errors, come here to my database, refresh, open up my table, look at customers. Knows clout score is now gone. Now you might be going, well, what is clout score? Well, that's a great question. It was something that wasn't needed. We originally defined it, and sometimes we'll do this where we have a score based upon how popular someone is on social media. Do they leave reviews? How much do they purchase? Those types of things. For some reason, this was determined to not be necessary. Now, a lot of times we'll leave old data in a database. That way we don't break anything programmatically. So that one's not used as much, but adding those fields is real common. Let's see how we would add something using Heidi SQL. So I'm going to come right here on this tab and choose add. And notice it gives me column 10. Well, that's just because it's the 10th column. That's a default name. Let's give it a real value. And I'm going to call this a review count. Once again, want to know how many reviews were listed there. This will be perfect for an integer. I don't need to specify a length that's kind of defaulted in there. I can come over here, however, to default and give it a value. So I can say, you know, custom text or expression, something like that. You notice with an expression, I can actually put in some built-in function calls that are in my SQL if I need to. I can choose auto increment. That's going to automatically update. That's usually only used for your primary key. So you don't want to do that. I'm going to come in here and say zero, click OK. And then all you have to do is say save. And that actually goes in and 
goes to the table automatically creates it for me. So I don't have to put that value in. Likewise, I can come over here and if I choose, you know what, I don't want that field. I, we changed our minds. Notice that when I select a field, here is a remove column option. I can remove it, click save, and that gets rid of it for me as well. So really, really fast and easy to go in and add and remove columns inside of Heidi SQL. There's one thing that I want to do, which is I want to put a comment. And I can put comments on either a whole table or on a field. I'm going to do the whole table just for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to come over here to my query tab. Alter table customers, going to leave that. But now I'm going to say comment equals, knows comment is a keyword, so automatically auto capitalized it for me. And then I'm going to put this in single quotes. This is not a tick mark. These are single quotes. And what am I going to say? Something like this table is used for. Now, you might go, well, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? Yes, it is. However, sometimes we'll find that tables are not obvious. And therefore, we want to have comments to help describe them. I'm going to click the run query. Over here, remember, we got to refresh it automatically. And now I'm going to come back to my table customers. AC, here's a comment for me. Well, the fun thing is I can actually make that comment inside of Heidi SQL. So a lot of times I'll prefer to use a tool like Heidi SQL or some other tool. There's a lot of other tools out there to help me do this. So that way it kind of helps make sure I don't make mistakes in typing and things like that. A lot of tools are going to go and give us drop down messages. They're going to give us a place to put things in. That way I don't have to think, well, is it comments or is it comments and things like that. I can also you notice put a comment on any field I want the exact same way. So I can come over here and specify just by double clicking it. I can type now a message. like such. As our databases get bigger and bigger and more complicated, this type of thing is very important for us. Being able to put comments in, especially if we're making changes that we're not requesting, it, maybe someone else is, and we know why we did this. So these are the simple ways that we can update an existing table. It's all part of the DDL, the data definition language that is built into SQL. And I hope you've enjoyed this series on it. Now there's another video coming up about how do we create users and give them permission to access the database. So stay tuned for that video, which is coming up.